Good day. This is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Hopefully you know what a post hole digger is. That's someone that continues to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. It has a special meaning because for a long time I was that prodigal son. I was in the lost and found department, although I had been raised a Christian, trained Bible school, seminary, college, educated, preached for 12 years in a prison ministry, and yet I still found myself at odds because the question that I posed was so often, why? And because I kept on asking why, I got excommunicated three different times. Among the Roman Catholics, it was weird. If your mother died, she could not be buried in holy ground because holy ground for the Roman Catholics was very special. They have a special understanding of how you go to heaven, who is going and who is not. And since my dad was not a confessing Roman Catholic, my mom could not be buried in holy ground. So it started at an early age, when I was six years old, when I started to dislike and hate God in essence, not knowing at that time God had nothing to do with it. But this is where it started for me. When seven years later, uh, after we had been in the orphanage for seven years, my dad remarried, I had indeed an experience that was weird. My father asked me to come home and I didn't know what a home was. So I was 13 and by 16 I was basically out on the way. I was kicked out because I didn't fit a family life. And since then I've been on my own. The beauty of it is I was never alone. But as I got to organize myself, traveled around the world as a merchant marine, had a chance to speak in all kinds of different situations. And each time when I stopped in a harbor, I had an opportunity to hook up with the local people. It was an awesome experience. And one thing I discovered, one merchant marine was an older gentleman. He had been around for about 37 years. He had big ships. And we were container ships at that time. It was just switching over. He was always very quiet. And I wondered, what is the quiet persona's secret? When there was a storm, he was very relaxed. He just looked at it and said, hmm, got to make sure that that is secured over there. And go over to the poop, the back of the ship, and make sure that those drums are locked. Yes, sir. He remained cool in the storms of life. But what about the three lying spirits? They can be a disaster in our lives. Well, this gentleman was an example for me to stay cool no matter what happened. And many times we have faced some very big challenges. I say often that I had to resolve something that I didn't like, but I had to do it. So part of my PhD is that I'm an happiness examiner, for I reclaim ancient insights to life. In other words, I dig into that foundation and find that what happened or what was spoken into existence 2000 years ago is awesome and can be alive and can change your life. The year 2020 has been a challenging year, but to our credit, we have learned new ways to connect and to strive verbally. So let's take a look and see what we can do about this. When people talk about PhD, they think it is a professor and it is something about philosophy. Philosophy is basically a viewpoint or a way of life. So my PhD is, as I call it, a post hole digger because I learned very early in life that many things that appear on the surface to be true are not really true. Unfortunately, 
The majority of people do not accept that because it is easier just to accept what they say without rocking the boat. Being who I am, I like to know why. And that question why has indeed put me in a lot of challenges, confronting situations because they did not look right. And when you asked why, how, what and where, it's amazing what kind of answers you find. See, the philosophy of tranquility. Tranquility is a peace. It is soothing. It's a choice and it's not easy. So for Stoic philosophers, tranquility is a choice. And there's a fellow by the name of Epictetus argues there are only five spiritual exercises to achieve that tranquility in the face of fear and anxiety. Epictetus or Titus was a Greek Stoic philosopher, born a slave at Hierapolis, that was in Turkey, and he lived in Rome until his banishment. He got kicked out too when he went to Nicopolis in northwestern Greece for the rest of his life. His pupil, Arian, wrote down and published his discourses and Epictetus taught that philosophy is a way of life and not just a theoretically discipline. In other words, we can learn a way of life. Now, who is this gentleman? He was born and around 50 and he lived to about 150. It is amazing that he was basically around the time of Yeshua HaMashiach. For many of you, he is more known as Jesus. He was the teacher of a philosophy of peace. And when we talk about joy and happiness, they were mainly looking for peace because it was a very unrestful time. Living in those days was not easy because the Roman Empire had all kinds of stuff going on. They were praying to gods and all kinds of weird stuff. They were sacrificed babies, the blood of babies, the blood of the enemies, sacrificing to a god called Melok or Baal. And the weirdest part is that that went on and on and on. So being a Stoic or Stoicism that does not destroy your emotions so much is not enough responses to feeling. In other words, it was not that you suffered of ADD or ORD, which we discussed, obsessive religious disorder, but you learned to control your emotions and you were at peace and you were calm. And that calmness is something that many people are striving for. So a long forgotten story explains this point. A Roman author on his way by ship with a reputed Stoic philosopher ran into a sturdy storm. In other words, that was a heck of a storm and it was a major storm. But this guy, he was long exposed to this so he knew what it was but he was curious to see how is this guy gonna respond this philosopher and the waves were him washing and crashing and all his watched the philosopher to see his response to the storm amazingly the stoic man was as scared as the rest of the group and when the storm passed Aldous, the roman guy he probed the philosopher and he said how are you sir he said the man took out of his copy, and one of his copies of the discourses by the famous Stoic philosopher. And this philosopher lived between 50 and 135 CE. Epictetus, he pointed to a passage clarifying that the outside environment is not under our control. So what happens on the outside is not under our control. Though we have the power to go along with those impressions are not. So in other words, whatever is coming to us, we can we can basically decide. Am I going to yell, scream or stay calm? And I found out that when you stay calm, 
amazing grace, you can find a solution. Just stay relaxed. But who else is saying that? There was a fellow by the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And when I say a fellow, he was a normal man. He was not special, but he had a special gift. He loved to read and he read the word of God. Now, in those days, this was around the year 30 AD. In those days, they had an old Bible. And when I say old Bible, it's the Old Testament as we know it today. When we look at many books in a bookstore, you might find a Bible. And the Bible exists out of 66 books. And there are 39 are in the Old Testament. Hmm, interesting. And those were given to a fellow by the name of Moses, Moshe. Now, why is this so important to know when we are talking about restorative justice, PMS versus PMS? Because we need to understand the foundation of the confusion. See, when this fellow started talking and sharing with people, they were all confused. They were praying to all kinds of gods and nothing seemed to help. You came home and one day everything was fine and the next day your whole house was gone and you might have ended up somewhere where you didn't know that you didn't want to. And so the life in the Roman Empire, although compared to what it used to be, was better, there was still a tremendous confusion. And peace and tranquility was something that many, many people were looking for. Even big fishermen, guys that were used to working hard early up in the morning, three, four o'clock in the morning, to be out on the sea by five to bring the fish in. And that was not an easy job. And those people came from the Nicenes. And amazing grace. We don't know much about them. Although we know an awful lot about them, but the majority of people, they stay away from it because they have not heard. And I started to wonder, why is that? Why are people in general not aware what is really happening? And so a little story. I shared it before, but I think it is good to have. A couple of fish were kind of desperate because they got fed up. They were getting together and they said, you know, what is actually water? Because one of them told them about water. He said, but what is water? And as they were swimming and talking and eating, they said, well, we recognize that, we recognize that, but we don't know what water is. And one said, you know what? There is that big koi sitting there, I think he's at least 100 pounds or so, 100 kilo even. He's a big fellow, he's been around for a long time. Maybe he knows. So eventually the fish all swam out to the big quarry and asked him, sir, may we ask you a question? I said, sure. He said, well, we wondered, can you tell us what water is? And he looked at them and said, let me ask you, you are asking me what water is. You were born in it and you have swam in it. You're eating in it. You're pooing in it and you're dying in it. And you don't know what water is. This story was told by that fellow, Jesua HaMashiach. And then he talked to the people, the Pharisees. I said, you're asking me to show God, yet you live in it, you're connected to it, you're breathing because of God, and you're asking me, show me God. When we come to our senses and when we get relaxed and we are stoic, we think about what real life is all about, we find out that there are a few more things that are more important than just chasing money. Peace requires that we have the guts to acknowledge the fact that life is not complete without having met the fellow 
who made that statement. And he opened the way for us, the truth and the life. The light is something that many of us are focusing on because we don't know what to say anymore. We have a pandemic. Many people don't know what it is, why it is. Other people know everything and they will tell you the weirdest story. But the reality is, where is your peace? If you want that peace, my recommendation is to go and seek the way. The way is open for everyone and it says that you knock on that door and the Father will open because it is restorative justice. And the first PA, PMS that reversed was physical, mental and spiritual versus the other PMS which is from the other side, it's politicians, money management and money. And as for spirituality or religion, trying to control and maintaining a control over a group of people so that they can be rich. The difference is it all started in paradise. And that is why we have PMS versus PMS. Today is October 31st. A lot of people are doing weird stuff. But some people are really doing some weird stuff because blood has a real meaning. The true meaning of blood, once you understand, you don't fool around with it. So my suggestion today is seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. God bless you. Bye for now. But before I let you go, tough times never last but tough people do if you want to know more about finding peace and tranquility then seek you first the kingdom of god and all his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you god bless you bye now